so hello and well, welcome. My talk today is about maintaining topological consistency uh, of simple features with QGIS tools and with PostGIS SQL rules. So some background for the talk. My name is Andra Komi and I'm a software developer at the National Land Survey of Finland. And we are working currently on a new topographical data production system, which is a PostGIS, QGIS based system for now. Uh, and about our use case, we are moving from a topological data model old system to a new simple features based one. And what our data is, it's a reward features like the lakes, terrain, streams, roads, buildings, all the kinds of stuff you find on the uh, maps. Uh, here's a link to our topographical database product description. It's open data, so you can find uh, more information about the data itself there. And where would you use like topological data and how it's used in the current system? For example, when we have like a polygon feature which needs specific attributes on some or all, all of, of parts of its boundaries, or for example, a polygon must have a shared edge with another polygon, so you want, want to leave gaps on the, on the between the two polygons. And then we have also lines that must form networks, for example, roads or water networks. We want to have the line ends at the intersection so we can have routing on the, on the network. And for example, here are some actual raster map examples of the data. So we have, for example, a shoreline that is marked as indefinite, so we can't really, like we mark the boundary that it's not so exact at that location on some parts of the lake. And then, for example, we have a shallows that must reside on a water feature, and it also has to have a shared edge on the shoreline with the, for example, here a C part feature. And then we have, for example, the road networks. We have a multi-level road network here, which has at this location four different levels, one ground and three bridges. So you must connect the nodes at the actual intersection so you can have proper routing on that. And how the data model differs, a short introduction. Uh, with simple features, for example here a lake is a polygon and the shorelines are the lines. So when the real world feature changes, you have to edit both individually. And the data is duplicated on all the edges, so you have both, like all the vertices duplicate on that edge. And the integrity, it's not guaranteed on the, like the data model side, so the shoreline can, and possibly in some cases will differ from the lake boundary if the edits are not, not done correctly. And in the topological model, the shorelines enclose a face, which is the lake. So when the real world lake will change, the edits will be done only on the shoreline edge. In that case, the edge is only stored once, and the nodes are shared for the both of the features. And because of that, the integrity of the data is guaranteed so that the shoreline and the lake are at the same location. So how we do the edits in QGIS with the simpler features? So with most map tools, the editing works fine. For example, if you want to edit multiple features on one operation, you can do that with the topological editing. You can move one vertex or selecting multiple vertices the tools work quite well. And if you use snapping, for example, you can use that to snap to another feature and the QGIS will add the topological vertices on the other features. And if you want to follow uh, another feature, a boundary or a line, you can do that with the tracing tool where you snap to a start location and to another location after that all the vertices between those points will be traced automatically. And for polygons, you can also use avoid overlap tool, like a configuration, 
uh, with that, you can just draw the polygons overlapping and QGIS will automatically clip the uh, overlap from the another feature so the features fit together well. And, but for our use case, it's often that the real world boundary of two features changes. So with the reshape tool, it currently, at least in QGIS, works in, with the single feature only. So with that, you need to redraw one and then fit the rest, for example, with the tracing tool or the avoid overlap configuration. And with the, uh, our system, we needed a workflow for easy topological reshape so that you can just redraw the new segment once. And for that, we created a tool called Segment Reshape Plugin. It's available on GitHub and in QGIS plugin repository, uh, where you can just pick a continuous segment, redraw the line, and all the features are modified with that. So here's an example of that when we have a lake uh, with, with a marsh, the yellowish uh, feature here. And then we have a change detected here is an aerial imagery. Maybe you can see that like, the marsh here has grown a bit. So we need to update the features to match the new reward conditions. Uh, so with the tool, you just pick the shoreline segment and it automatically calculates the longest continuous segment between the features. It ends at the location where the other course lines meet the features. So uh, with that, you can just reshape the, the whole segment that was picked in a way that, for example, here the features are meeting together. So you can use the tracing tool and then just pick the, in the location that you need to redraw the new location, you can use the, you can just digitize the new points there. And then you end, when you end the digi digitization, uh, the whole, all the features that meet at the location are, are modified according to the one, one redraw line. And when the data is edited, uh, we need to validate the uh, features in the database. And for our approach, we chose that we query the possible problems from the database features. So we have one place of reference for all the issues. We can have both simple attribute-based issues there listed and also the complex topological issues so that we only, only have one tool for all the clients. So it's not client-dependent that you check, for example, uh, use QGIS uh, topological validation tool, for example, to check for uh, geometry self-intersections or like that. So we also check those with the with the tool we have built. Uh, uh, this this way it allows us to change uh, save the data that is somehow like in progress. For example, if you have some attributes that you don't yet know, you can still digitize the feature and save it to the database and then maybe come back to the attribute later in the workflow. And with that, we have built a QGIS doc widget tool uh, for viewing these issues. It takes a JSON file that describes the different violations and shows the geometry errors, for example. Uh, here's a link to our GitHub. Uh, it's a basically a QGIS uh, library to use with the maybe your own plugins. And also a talk by my colleague Oli Rantanen uh, from last year. You can check that also as well. Uh, so about the validations in the database. For example, uh, there are different kind of sanity checks. Like for example, the valid geometry case, we don't want to rely on the client to validate the geometries. So you can save invalid geometries to the database, but the tool will also check those. And for example, with some tools in QGIS or with some processing algorithms with SQL, uh, it might cause some maybe cheat coordinate values missing from the features. So we check those as well. And for kind of attribute checks, we can check for, for example, value ranges. 
if, for example, we have an attribute that must be in a like, numerical range, you could input some invalid there, but we don't want to prevent saving to the database with that. And, for example, we have some combinations of code lists where you pick one attribute and another attribute must match with that, so we can also check those. And for the geometrical relationships, uh, the simple cases, of course, uh, like the containment, we must have a water, boulder in water in a water feature. So that can be checked as well with simple post-JS functions. And maybe the overlap case also, maybe we don't want buildings overlapping, so we can check those with simple uh, post-JS functions as well. Uh, but for the more complex cases, the topological validations, for example, we have a case where a line must linearly intersect only one polygon boundary. This is a case for a shoreline. We want the shoreline to intersect only one, for example, one lake only, where the shoreline must be cut where the two lakes meet. So we check that with the as the relate because it's a, like a more complex case for the linear intersection. And for uh, also for the shorelines, because we might have, for example, two lakes connected, and we want to ensure that the shorelines enclose the whole lakes. We can't check the lakes itself, because there is no shoreline between the lakes. So we kind of turn that around to check and check that the shoreline actually intersects one other line for itself. So it's a closed line for a single lake or it's meeting with another one single shoreline. So we can check the integrity of the shorelines on the lakes. And for example, line interiors may not intersect other lines. This is a case for a network. We don't want, for example, roads connected not in a intersection. So the lines must be cut where the lines meet if it's an actual actual uh, intersection in the network. And for example, line interior may not intersect polygons. This is a case also for ST-relate function where the, um, for example, a water feature like a stream, uh, it obviously cannot flow along the boundary of a lake. So we want the line to meet the lake at a single location only. So we can check that as well. And for the more special cases, for example, for the net road networks, if the user made a mistake and didn't snap the uh, intersection, because it's not connected at all, we can't really make a case for that like it's invalid. But we made a rule that you cannot have two line endpoints too close to each other. Because in that case, it could be a mistake that you should snap the intersection, so it's an actual valid network. And in many cases, it's also necessary for the source and target tables to have filters. For example, the network image, where there are four levels of roads, we don't want to cause the rules to market violating when, it, when it's actually a different level of a road. So we have an attribute on the roads, like what level of like from up from zero is ground level and then from up there, we can just say that it must be on the same level if the rule applies. And the difficulties we have faced in the when implementing this is, uh, for example, Z, uh, Z coordinate handling uh, that causes issues also with the QGIS tools. Sometimes it's a not a number on the Z coordinate, and also some PostgreSQL functions maybe drop the Z coordinate. So we must handle that as well. And also performance is a uh, very, very difficult in some cases to structure the queries in a way that it's performant. For example, the uh, no dangling endpoints query, I think it took like five or six iterations to get to a good enough performance level. And for uh, some cases, we have a data modeling related challenges where we, for example, a shoreline outside of Finland boundaries, the lake is just cut, 
where we don't want to model it. And then the, like the rule applies that you should have the lake completely surrounded by a shoreline. But when it's outside of Finland and we cut the lake, we don't want the shoreline to appear there where there is no actual shoreline. So we can use maybe a attribute based on the country of location, like if it's completely outside of Finland, to control whether the rule applies or not. And also some modifications might cause other features to be invalid. For example, when you modify a lake and there is a maybe a bouldering water in the lake, if you modify the lake, the boulder might be left outside the lake. And due to the performance issues, uh, we chose not to implement these rules within uh, like a triggers uh, in the query time. So we check the violations asynchronously late after the edit. So we don't have access to the old and new geometries. So we just have to kind of basically recheck every boulder in water if you modify any water feature. But in those simple cases, it's often performant enough to check all the data in the current working copy for the user. And how we configure the rules, uh, we first define the rule types needed. For example, generic cases like where you want to have a certain kind of intersection with the features. And then we have a huge matrix of rules between the feature types. We have like 60 or 70 feature types where we define the, like how they should interact based on the current system. So we could implement the same rules in the new system. Uh, how it works for us, uh, we have a YAML file for the SQL templates, where, which is the generic case where you can just template out the tables and other variables. And then we have the uh, configuration for the YAML file, which is the actual like what different abstract rules we apply for different kind of feature types. And uh, then we have the result YAML, which is actually like the template that executable SQL. We didn't want to take, like template out at the runtime, so we just generate the, like the full executable SQL here. For us, it's like 20 megabytes and 400,000 lines. It's quite huge, but that contains all the information. We like we just execute the SQL and get the violations back from the queries. And with the link, you can find examples for configuration. That's our repository for our Java library, which is basically the abstract implementation of the API for the SQL, what should it, the queries return, and what the JSON file looks that the QGIS plugin can display to the user. Yeah, that was all. Thank you for listening, and I think I have time for questions. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you for the presentation, Erki, uh, from Positium. What was the motivation to move from a topological data model to the simple feature? And are you now happy with the move, or there is still motivation to have some of the feature from the existing topological model? Thank you. Uh, I think the, when we first implemented this, I don't remember exactly how we decided, but we have implemented, uh, like the next talk in this room is actually from the, like our system in general. Uh, so we chose the simpler features to have a more simple versioning. Like we could implement like long transactions in PostGIS more simply by using the simple features. Maybe we could just like look at one feature at a time and not to consider the whole topology model behind that. So that was the, like the technical aspect on why we chose the simpler features instead of the like PG topology stuff. And as a developer, um, I think we have some issues like what we discussed on the performance side and stuff, but I think it's still like, it works well for the, with this configuration and uh, with this system for the using simple features. So the next one, who wants to ask? Natalia Raikunen from um, 
Lovely state of Finland. Um, uh, you said about uh, th that uh, after validation, you you provide for users human readable uh, say understanding <laughs> of validations, and uh, what you do for this that uh, validations um, results will be more understandable. Um, and uh, do you provide uh, some rules for fixing uh, these errors? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, if you check the link uh, to the last year's presentation or the, uh, the user interface, uh, what we try to provide the user is uh, like a tree view of the like different uh, levels of violations. Like if you have fatal like blocking errors or like that, and then we have like the SQL is defined in a way that it returns the geometry that best describes the error. So we don't, like, maybe the error description might be like, okay, uh, the buildings may not overlap. That's the, like, the, the user sees that description. Buildings may not overlap. But the geometry that's shown is, in that case, the overlapping area between maybe two buildings. Because the rule is implemented in a way that, okay, we select, we select the buildings that uh, intersect and then we return the uh, violation geometry as the intersection of those two buildings. So that you can see, okay, this is the, this is the area that's violating a rule. So it provides some hints to the user how to fix the problem, but not like clear directions. Maybe that's another like way to link to a documentation somewhere. Like, okay, these are the cases that you should fix, like maybe, well, maybe like this, but not in, the, in that. Uh, location. Uh, we have time for one more question. Does anyone wants to ask? If not, then thank you, Antero.